Hello, and welcome to another SAP Workflow Expert video. Today we're going to continue our series on the different workflow step types with the fork step, which is our first process step. Stay tuned! Today we'll show you how to control the flow of your workflow template using a process step type. This step type is called the fork step, and it effectively allows you to fork out in several directions and create a condition on how many of those directions need to come back for you to continue the process flow. We'll start in the workflow template with the same one we used in the previous video. In this case, what we're going to do, make sure we're in change mode, we're going to right click where we want to put our fork. We're going to click create. You'll notice that the fork is down the list a little bit. The top five step types are activities, or actions that people have to take. The rest of these step types control the flow of the process. One of the ones that is used frequently is the fork. We have used process control and looping step types in other videos. However, we'll cover them all. Today we'll use the fork, and it's a pretty simple one. In this case, we're going to fork to wait for a change. So in a workflow design in general, if you're waiting for somebody to approve a document type, purchase order, or travel request, or change to a material, or a shop floor order, the if someone were to change it during the approval flow you need to know about it so we wait for that change event on the side as we're processing the approval at the same time in this case we'll have two parallel branches however you'll notice the fork can go up to double digits you can have several parallel branches you can also ensure that the actual fork step is not in the workflow log. I normally like to have as much information as I can in the workflow log, so I keep it in there. The end condition for the fork is how many branches need to come back, or you can create a condition based on something else, uh, an element in the workflow container or some kind of logical expression. Today we'll just say that one of the two branches has to come back, and then the process can continue. And that's all there is to it. Now we can see that the two steps go out. We're waiting for one of the two back. And then we continue our process. The fork step is pretty simple. We'll save and activate. And there are no troubles. Today, we've used the fork step type to allow for parallel processing in the workflow template. Thank you for watching. Please feel free to subscribe to catch the next video on a different step type that can be used in the workflow template. And hit the thumbs up if this video helped you solve a problem in your own system.